good day to you. This is Emma Galactic to get the solutions for quantum mechanics and the solutions for cosmology. That it's simplification, continuity, relations, communication, and logic, which is both deductive and inductive. We've also covered how science does what it does, how it deals with facts, how it uses logic using a method known as the scientific method, and what science produces, which is knowledge and understanding. And geometry is my topic. That's really what I deal with. This is the foundation of science. Numbers are not, and theories are not. Geometry solves theories, basically usually these days showing that the theories are wrong. Now in geometry we deal with objects, basically the line, circle, and sphere. We deal with dimensionality, which I cover in great detail. Imaginarity is a very important topic to understand. Forces. We'll be dealing with forces again. The progress of science, that it's hierarchical, and we've made several intrinsic discoveries over the past 200 years, including 4D linear space, the basis of Albert Einstein's solution for gravity. We also discovered the universe itself. Marcia Bartusiak, in her incredible book, The Day We Found the Universe, backs me up on the... We knew about stars, but we didn't know anything else about the universe until exactly 100 years ago, nine days ago, is when Edwin Powell Hubble discovered on October 6, 1923, a Cepheid star in Andromeda, and that was the beginning of the modern space age. We deal with cosmic units. This is my term. I've identified seven cosmic units. The universe we need to know about, time, space, mass, energy, each one of these are extremely broad topics that I've simplified, made continuous, found the relations so we can communicate, so we can actually understand using logic what time, space, mass, and energy are. Nobody does yet, but we're very close. That's not good enough. For instance, what about light? What's that? What's gravity? Those are the opposite forces in the universe that make the universe balanced. It's also finite. Max Planck discovered that. I rediscovered it and solidified it with the correct geometry. We need to know about numbers. I deal with that in extraordinary detail. We also talk about reality. A reality is time-related. Is it continuous? Uh, space related is space continuous. I have the answers for those and Roger Josef Boschkovich does too. Uh, we are geocentric. Uh, the Earth is a center of the universe. It's uh, obviously not the center, but it's one of them. Why? Because there's a center. And we're egocentric. Every consciousness represents a point. And you can think of it that way. That's the correct way to think about it. And that takes care of the AI consciousness controversy when it's dealt with logically and rationally, as I do, and nobody else does. So we go into the history of science and the kinds of communication that are employed. We as humans need to know our origins. We don't. Uh, we could, but it's blocked. Because it leads to stuff that makes people upset. Well, it's too bad. What's, what's really too bad is when you let your emotions interfere with logic. And so we have a theory of natural selection that's not even a real theory. There's no such thing as natural selection. So we don't know where humans come from, but we have to know. I can help you with that. We need to know where life comes from. Basically, that's the ecology that takes care of humans and the animals and plants. We need to know where the Earth comes from. That means we need to know where the sun comes from, the galaxy comes from, and everything after that. There are seven cosmic units, which I'll teach you. We need to know how science has become fractalized. This is where we get things like the multiverse theory and the theory of inanimate consciousness, which is basically scientific atheism, which is not scientific. Science does not take a stand on God. What we do is we discover superintelligence because design <laughs> runs the universe. Where do we get our intelligence from? Uh, Richard Dawkins and Larry Krauss and tens of thousands of other professors and top-notch scientists say it comes from dirt. That's impossible. Dirt does not structure itself. Just as life does not structure itself from amoebas into hippopotamuses and people. Um, those are insane theories. You might not think so. Then you're not a scientist, okay? So we need to also understand our reference frame in order to understand anything. But science today is based on numbers, and so I go into number theory. But it's not theory. It's what numbers actually are. That is never taught. Uh, we deal with the number one, that's the uni and universe. Uh, where does zero come from? I deal with that. That's a huge problem in mathematics now is the number zero. 
You may have heard that infinity is a problem. Not anymore. I have the first definition of infinity of all time that's correct because it can be proved and it's explanatory and that's how, that's what we're after is a stuff that makes sense so we also need to know where negative numbers come from those are very strange and fractions those are not only strange they're informative and then we need to know about logic there are various kinds of logic that's not often discussed there's more than two kinds but binary logic is by far the most important one because it's machine logic that's, by the way, linear because it's 0-1 based, certainly in a computer. But 0 is always the problem, and it's a problem in computers too. Division by 0 will freeze your CPU. Now, we need to talk about continuity. This has to do with time and space, and Ruger Yosef Boschkevich and I have got the right angle on that. And there's a pun that I didn't see coming, the right angle on that. It's a right angle in spherical space. Roger got it, so did I. Nobody else has. Additivity, that's the basis of the linear number system. They don't represent things physical. That's another reason linear numbers fail. So we need spherical numbers, because those are relational numbers. Fractions are a good example of that. We go into that in great detail. A particle cannot be impenetrable. Um, so the quantum mechanical paradox is based on a misperception of what is a particle. Again, Roger and I got the right answer. Nobody else has it. In talking about the universe, you need to know the hierarchy of the universe so you have a rational frame of reference to avoid people who will tell you lies about the Big Bang, lies about black holes, and lies about expanding and merging, merging galaxies. Galaxies don't merge, uh, ver not very often. What you see, uh, let's take a good look at this so you can get a visual aspect on this. Look at those two galaxies there to my upper left. Do those look like they're merging? Um, all the scientists say yes. Astrophysics only has one point of view, basically based on the Big Bang cosmological expansion theory, which is insane. But those two galaxies were actually born together. And they are interacting, essentially, magnetically. They're both born from a black hole, which became a quasar. And then it became a double-lobed, active galactic nucleus called a dragon has nothing to do with superstition it does have to do with reality though galaxies are very often born in pairs Halton Arp was on to that but he was drummed out of the league because he, he didn't believe in the Big Bang if you didn't believe in the Big Bang in the 1960s you were crucified now what is science science is about simplification continuity relations communication I dealt with all that we're going to be talking about the line, circle, and sphere. You must understand those or you'll never understand anything, just as our modern scientists talking about cosmology and quantum mechanics cannot possibly make any more progress. That's painfully obvious. Thank you for tuning in to Anagalactic. That's 10 minutes. We'll be right back. Keep looking up. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We have all the answers. Science is supposed to maintain a priestly function. We're supposed to be the guides. Don't look around for any, but you're looking at one right here. I will not lie to you because I can prove what I say. Stay tuned.